We're nothing cast. We're live from the the, the place, the, the common room. Strike day. Oh, uh, it's, it's like twenty five. We're on the fourth week. That's all I know. Yeah, which is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of weeks. It's a lot, yeah. It's basically a month. Yeah, like I had work for the first couple weeks, but then you know, yeah. last week I basically finished everything. But now, mm. but now you finished uh, something else. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a lot of cheese in that bite. Oh, yeah, um, so we're eating food. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, the audio is um, gonna sound like garbage. I just finished Game of Thrones, and right. and I'm just tired. I don't know why. That's just from the strike, but like, it's just crazy. It's been this crazy journey. Yeah, and like I, I. And oh. now you're all caught up to season seven. So I have to wait. So I have to wait like a year and a half. And it sucks longer. because that's all we know of Game of Thrones right now. And I know it all. Yep. And it's frustrating. You're stuck in the same boat as the rest of us now. Yeah. You're all caught up with the wait. So, uh, oh. I'm trying to think of like how to break down Game of Thrones. Because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk? Do you want to go season by season? Mm. Yeah. So season one, I watched about three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, a while ago. Yeah. But I remember most of it. And like, so I basically knew all the context for everything. Uh -huh. So going into season two, I wasn't really lost or anything. Season two, like season one is basically like... It's good, but, like, I guess I didn't really enjoy it as much. One, because I was just that much younger. I was, like, 15, right? I'm just like, all right, there's some, a lot of people talking. This is fine, I guess. Like, yeah. So I, I would probably enjoy it more if I watch it now. Um, but it's mostly set up. Like, no, there's not many substantial events in season one other yeah. than, like, you know, Joffrey gets the throne and Ned dies. And that's all in, like, the last two episodes. Then after that, like, everything just kind of, like, it moves. Like, it starts, it, feel, it really feels like every episode, something significant is accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it, it's not just because there's a bigger budget. Like, by, by season seven, you can tell that their budget is huge because every episode ends with a giant fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> so, the giant action movie fight scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... One of my favorite things is is the the dragons because mm -hmm. every season they get a little bigger and they a little more and the effects look a little better. Mm -hmm. So like by yeah mm -hmm. by like season six and seven it's like this is equal if not better than most anything, movies anything Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, season one, I think the dragons honestly look the most real when they were just practical eggs. Well, they were just eggs. Because that, because you can show them. Yeah, I mean, they weren't dragons yet. Though. No, I just what I think would be cool for like season eight, or I guess that's it. I guess it's just season eight yeah. now. One more season to just invest in like a couple shots with practical giant dragon heads. Yeah, like Jurassic Park type stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, because they have, they can pretty much do whatever they want now. Yeah. Like, they have enough of a budget that mm -hmm. if they ask, hey, we need ten more million dollars, they'd be like, yeah, sure. Um, but, yeah, that, that would be cool. It'd be like, you'd have to figure out if, like, mm -hmm. it would work for the shots that they have in mind to do with practical mm -hmm. guys and stuff. No. You have, it, like, you have it, like, like, Daenerys is just, like, hanging out in her apartment, and then, like, you have the dragon just poke its head in, and it's like, oh, hey, guys. Like, like, yeah. Did you have some nice sex? It was some nice sex. So, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know how to review the whole series, mm -hmm. but I can only think of, like, no. hey, remember when that happened? That was cool, and, like... <laughs> no, that's why I think going season by season is probably helpful, so I'm still on season two mentally. Right. So they introduced... A lot of things yeah, in the season. More characters. Um, basically, the Tyrells, um, mm -hmm. uh, Stannis Baratheon. I think he's. Yeah. I think he's in season one a little bit, but no, he doesn't show up. Really? Season two. 
because okay, so Stannis Baratheon, Renly Baratheon, mm-hmm. uh, both the Tyrells, um, I guess. Uh, you have like Breen of Tarth. Yeah, Breen of Tarth. Yeah. You have. Uh, I think was those are the main new ones. The main new ones, yeah. Uh, and then it's just like. And Ramsey by the season finale, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't know if you see him, but like I, I'm pretty sure Theon's strapped to the board by the end of season two. Yeah. Yeah. Or is that like a? Wait, no, no. I think he just gets knocked season. out. Beginning of season three. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was trying to remember what happens to Arya in season two. She's uh, in like that. He's on the run, basically. Mm-hmm. She like hides with the. Uh, oh, the one guy who's the bastard of. Robert yeah. Robert yeah. Baratheon. Yeah. 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 But right. he doesn't know, and he's right. like, yeah. Yeah, she's hanging out with those guys. Mm-hmm. And the one guy who likes baking bread and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think season two is... It was really interesting because, like... There were, like... It's like the War of the Five Kings, right? So, like, all these people have, like... Like, really clear character motivations. But yeah, it's just yeah, super yeah. cool to see conflict... Where everyone thinks they're the hero. Yeah, no. And there's like five people that believe that. I guess the fifth one's a little more like the Greyjoy one. You don't really think of as much. Yeah, you're like. But that, but that's why, but that's why like Theon takes um, Winterfell and like all of that happens. Yeah, like, and that's important so for important. Theon. It's important for Theon, but it's less important when it, like, like when it comes to Blackwater. Like that's definitely more mm. War of Five Kings type stuff, where it's like this is one guy's entire army versus another entire army and yeah. after i saw the first two seasons that was my favorite episode of the series that i had seen because it was just so focused it was just like yeah, here's, a, here's one that. giant battle here's everyone that affects your like because there's a scene where we see like um cersei lannister and sansa stark we're just in the bunker and cersei's like giving her her like her wisdom and stuff like it's messed up as her wisdom is like she's still got some like like, oh, you gotta do this when you're a lady because it sucks to be a woman in, right. in this time and, like, you know, stuff like that. So it's kind of cool to see things like that. So Blackwater was my first favorite episode. Um, yeah. Uh, that's a good one. And then season three is, like, I don't know, I guess it's the dark season. Um, it's more... I mean, all of it. All it's of more... The shows. I guess season three is when it's... It's kind of I, like uh, Arya's more on the run. I, I I have trouble remembering a lot of the other plot yeah. lines. Um, Arya season three, on... Arya's on the run. Uh, Sansa's in. Oh, Marjorie um, is going to get married to Joffrey. Yeah. In King's Landing, and uh, Cersei doesn't like Marjorie, and that's kind of part of that. I guess that's that whole story. Yeah. Um, Tyrion does he marry Marcella off in that season? To get back at Cersei, kind of thing, or because um, he tried. Tyrion's like, "Oh, I just wanted to make an alliance with the Darnish, and then, and then, um, Cersei's like, know. "Fuck you! You did that to, to spite me." And then he's like, mm, "I just, I just wanted to make a an alliance with the Darnish." Yeah. I think that happens in season. Don't, I don't care about Marcella, to be honest. No, but it's um, just the the Dornish though are important later. Yeah, yeah, Marcella. that's when also when um, he gets to marry. Uh, yeah, so I Mary Sansa in season three. Um, season three is um, I'm just trying to figure out everything because the Red Wedding is the obvious thing to talk about. But yeah. Um, oh, is the Hound find Arya in season three? Yeah, after the yeah, and Jon Snow Red is Wedding. with the Wildlings for most of the season. Most of part. Well, yeah. it's pretty much like because like the end of yeah, the season finale, he kills the one guy, and then the Wildlings are like, oh, you're coming with us. Like season two finale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Jamie is on an adventure with Brienne of Tarth. Yeah, yeah. That's probably the best part of season three. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a great adventure that they have. All those side adventures are the best. Mm-hmm. Like, when it's just like two, two mm-hmm. of the characters yeah. that, that um, don't belong together, but then they end up bonding. They're forced to be on a voyage. Like, yeah. um, and they just have to go from one place mm-hmm. to another. Because in season four, Podrick has to travel with Green of Tarth. Yeah, and that's also pretty great. Yeah, and um, the other one, the other one that's awesome, that's always great, is um, Arya and the Hound. Mm-hmm. So just like this, is, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
that starts in season three. So then season four hits. And season four, I think, probably has, like, the most... I don't know if it's... It's probably my favorite season because the most, like, really awesome stuff happens yeah. in it. Like, episode two, Joffrey is dead. Yeah. It's just... He's just gone. And it's, like, and they have to deal with that for the rest of the season. Is a lot of them having to deal with that. Um, then, so I guess... Does Marjorie er, marry Tommen within uh, within um, season four? Yeah. Um, there's a point where uh, um, Tyrion gets accused of killing Joffrey, so it's kind of like the initiating event for the season, actually. And it uh, comes out yeah. of, and it comes out of nowhere, like. Because I'm like, wow, you're such a dick, Joffrey. Yeah. Like he's just like he's at like his peak asshole, peak dickness, yeah. peak dick level of. Yeah, like, like he's been, he's the weird. most being the most asshole ish that yeah. we've ever seen him yeah, before. When, when I was rewatching that one with you, yeah. it's so great because they like they're like in case you forgot that Joffrey's a dick, they like really hammer. They it really hammer home, home and it's so, like so it's like so satisfying. It's so and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's even gonna happen? Like that's my that's what whenever something unexpected like that happens, I'm just like, what is what is even what is even gonna happen to Westeros? Like, yeah, um, and. uh Yeah, Tyrion's trial is great. Mm-hmm. Everything with um, there's Tyrion's trial then is great, and then it turns into a trial. Like the, the actual court drama is amazing, mm-hmm. and then it turns and then he's like, like when he just like I totally forget the rest of the speech because I was so blown away by the first line of it. And I'm like, Tyrion's a talker and he hasn't been talking this whole time. Like, what's he even gonna say? And then when he starts talking, I'm like, this is amazing television. Yeah. He's like, I've been on trial my entire life. And it's just like, oh, it's so good. Yeah. I fucking love you, Tyrion. This is amazing television. And then Oberyn pledges to fight for him because the mountain, like, murdered his sister. And, like, there's yeah. just, like, all these, like, conflicting, like, all these crossroads of character motivation. And, like, it's, it's just this huge web of really well Game done. of Thrones is just a huge web, and I think it's best done in season four. Yeah. When there's just all these webs and crossroads yeah, and stuff that, is, that intersect where... That's possibly my favorite. Four and six are my two favorite seasons. I think, I think four is my favorite, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why six isn't my favorite. Because I think this, it gets... Each season gets better... Up until four, mm-hmm. and then five is a little bit of a dip, and then I mm-hmm. it, and then I really like six. No, and then seven is kind of no. In my opinion, I think six, six is almost yeah. Seven is almost in a separate area of space. And we'll talk about that. Yeah, but I just want to talk about season four because there's because then there's there's Tyrion's trial, which is amazing. And there's from um, Arya's traveling with the Hound, so everything is great with that, mm-hmm. and um, uh. Breen of Tarth is now traveling with Podrick, and that's not as important, but it does become important when they cross paths with the Hound, which leads to, like, one of my favorite one-on-one combats in all of the yeah. series. Which is a great fight. Which is so intense, because it's just, first, it's just, like, sword on sword. It's like, you've seen it a million times. Like, you've seen sword fights before, because we watch movies, so it's like, yeah, the sword fights, it's just, it's whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, and it's like, oh, they're pretty evenly matched, right? And they get to a point where they're just rolling around in the dirt, like, trying to stab each other, and, like, they're just, like, <laughs> yeah. it's just so she dirty, and she, like, bites off his ear. And, like, it's yeah. so, it gets so... There's no, like, class to it. No. Or anything. No, none at all, and, like, Brain of Tarth is someone who's usually, like, pretty classy yeah. about, you know, she's like, oh, I'm gonna keep my oath to Catelyn Stark, even though she's dead. But I'm gonna protect her daughters, and that's her like motivation for basically everything after the red wedding. Yeah. Like, uh, mm-hmm. we'll forget that. Um, Brienne of Tarth is such a good character because she's just someone who's like failed repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my goal was to protect Renly Baratheon. Renly dies in like episode two, season two. Or episode three, he gets yeah, killed by like fails like rooks. So she fails, fails right away, and she's like, "Oh man, I really suck at this." And then Catelyn dies in season three, and like, and she's just like, "Oh, I'm so bad at uh All right, so then like I'm she's like, "No, fuck it, I'm not, I'm not doing it this time. I'm not, I'm not gonna fail. I'm gonna freaking murder you." Yeah, yeah. And she throws him off a cliff. <laughs> it's so good. And then she's like, "Shit, where did Arya go? Oh, oh, fuck, I failed again. <laughs> fuck." Audrey, what were you doing? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. well, wasn't it that Podrick was like, 
He's like, watch her, and then he's like, all right, and then she just gets away because yeah. she's just Arya. Yeah. No, so that was season four was a lot of just that, just really good crossroads and, and webs to be woven. And I've been tu- I haven't even touched on the wall, the, the wall. brick and wall, which is the other huge part of this season. Yeah, that's which is, it. Which, there's that. And they introduce this character who's like this one. He's just like this kid whose oh, family yeah, gets killed kid. by wildlings. He has such an interesting relationship with Jon Snow. It's uh-huh. so cool because there's this moment where there's just this kid here, like I don't care. And then like at, at one point, there's because the, the wildlings. They, why do they want to take Castle Black? Because they don't want to be. They're dead. like. Because the White Walkers, are the White Walkers coming. are coming, yeah, and so we need to get it on the other side of that wall. Mm-hmm. So the Night Watch, like, no, wildlings are bad, so we want to, yeah, we don't want them to kill everyone because that's just what they do. Because there's that one kid whose family died because the yeah. wildlings just rape and pillage, and they're just terrible people. So, so then they're like, well, shit, we gotta, we should, we gotta defend the wall then, and then, so then there's that amazing fight, which is basically just Helm's Deep, yeah, and there's like the really cool. Crane tracking shot. Yeah, that was pretty good. That, that's one of my favorite shots in the series. Um, and, then, and that's so that's just like a really cool episode because it's just the wall, the whole episode. But back to the this boy or whatever. Like I don't even know his name. He's just a kid, I can't right? Remember? Yeah, I but he, I never remember his name. But he ends up killing um, Egrid, who. Yeah. Um, John was, like, you know, crazy for, like, he was, like, in love with her and stuff, Mm -hmm. and, um, she also murdered this kid's parents, Yeah. so, like, that kind of, like, that almost kind of, like, starts to create a rift between him and this kid, like, without even knowing it subconsciously, John is, like, this kid kind of murdered the woman I love, like, he's not, but, like, this, and then this kid's, like, well, this woman murdered my parents, so, like, you know. Yeah, it's well done. Which gets much more interesting. In season five, when he's like, "If we let the wild link, we'll let the wildlings across, so that we can." Um, yeah, we need their help. We need their help, and then the kid's like, "What the hell, man? Wildlings are terrible." And he's like, "Yeah, well, I like being alive." And it's just like, and John has like lived with the wildlings, so like he knows. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get knocking. Yeah, he knows their life, but he knows. He knows their style, they're, they're how the, like, that they're just kind of people, and they're just kind of caught on the wrong side of the wall or whatever, and that's just where they're born, that's all they know. So then, so John is, like, super sympathetic for them, but this kid just doesn't care because his parents were freaking murdered, so he's only seen the part, the side of the wildlings where they just murder everyone. Yeah. So when John does that... <clears throat> A bunch of the Night's Watch people conspire to murder him. And the kid is the one... Is he the one that drives the knife into his heart? Like, yeah, he's, he's yeah. the final blow. Yeah. And that was, <laughs> that like was a, brutal. It's like a... What's... Um, it's like a, Caesar, a Julius Caesar murder where they like... They all, they all, they all, they all do, do it together. And they so all stab him like, together. Mm-hmm. And he gets stabbed like a bunch of times. And yeah, no, yeah, I know. Uh, the kid I know you laughing. cried when you watched this and I cried when I watched yeah. this. No, well, it was mostly because I was really tired. My eyes were kind of glazed over already. No. But the tears didn't fall until that happened because it's just like, there is no hope. Like, it's like Jon Snow dying was like all hope being extinguished from the universe. Yeah. And it was so brutal. And it was to be from, just from a kid who just, like, that was just such a good, like, end of that relationship between those two characters. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's... It's and like John having John having to hang him when he comes back is just so good. Also, like yeah, that was a good that's good. a good moment. Yeah, like um, season five um, is the first season that I thought was a little weaker than the other stuff. Yeah, it's hard to kind of tell what happened during season five. <laughs> yeah, like some of the stuff I really like. I like most of. Oh, Arya's Arya's like doing her Jedi training. For, yeah, yeah, that stuff is pretty cool. Most of the wall stuff is good. Yeah. Daenerys is... Most of the stuff is fine. Yeah, no, I haven't um, even talked about Daenerys in any of these seasons. Um, like, but, I, like, but, like, that's the season where... That's where, a whole other... I feel like Daenerys is kind of in her own area of space. Yeah, yeah, I, you kind of have to talk about... Yeah, it's... It's, 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 it's one story, and it's completely separate from everything else, so I like to talk... I kind of want to talk about that separately. Yeah, but right, yeah, before, yeah. right before we reach season seven. Oh, yeah, the, the, the stuff where... where um, 
Tyrion meets Daenerys is pretty cool. Oh, that's in season five, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best part of season five. Um, but, but like, Tyrion, Tyrion goes off and um, meets Daenerys. Uh, Stannis Baratheon is trying to get his army back together, and then they all just die. Uh, Theon's strapped to a board, or no, he's working for no, Ramsey now. He was strapped to a board for most of season three and four. Yeah. Apparently, um, in the books, because I've uh, learned things about the books over the oh, okay. years. Um, yeah. In the books, um, when you first meet Reed, you yeah. don't know it's Theon. Oh, that's so cool. Until like later on, like someone recognized him. He's like, oh, it's, that's Theon. And he's like, no, but, no I'm Reed. My name's Reed. And, like, stuff. And, and so like, it becomes confusing to the reader. Like, well, it's like it's like a reveal. It's like oh. you meet this character named Reek who shows up and he's that's, like that's of, of yeah. Ramsey. And then like later on, you find out, oh shit, this is this was Theon at one point. Yeah, he just got tortured and shit until like he doesn't even remember who he is. That's that that's crazy. That's the that's the kind of plot twist that you can only do in a book. Yeah, because is, like, and, and I get like, yeah, like they're they're just you just wouldn't be able to do that. In a, in a show because mm-hmm. you can just like, recognize we, the actor you'd be like that's, we, that's yeah you, because you'd be like oh it's, wait a minute isn't that the actor yeah so there's scenes oh, yeah. where Ramsey's like no your name is Reed and stuff yeah. so like I'm sure I mean, that's stuff that wasn't in the book yeah or it like is explained like later on and things like that yeah and then in an anthology story yeah. Theon a Star Wars story yeah <laughs> but yeah that's just like it's a cool idea that like you just you couldn't do in the, in the so I guess movie season 5 is showing. kind of like the formal introduction to the Boltons yeah, they're pretty. Uh, they're a pretty big deal. You know, yeah, they take, they take Winterfell, and, and Sansa they, uh, gets married to Ramsay Bolton. Yeah. That's part of season five, um, which is like. So I guess it's kind of the dark season. I, I'd it's say it's a little bit. Of, yeah, it's season five is kind of the dark season. season. It's a little bit of the Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, it's a lot of. It's probably the biggest dip in the. But like one of the biggest things that I think is not that great about season five is um, when uh, Jamie goes to Dorne, because like. And and um, this was one of the first um, stories that they did that was like not from the books, and I feel like it really shows because it's just like he goes to Dorn, he meets all the Dorn guys. He's like, oh, I want my daughter back, and then she just dies, and then he goes back home, and that's the arc. And it's like, well, that was such a good moment though. That was a good work, I guess. No, but like when, like I guess the the arc as a whole wasn't like as like. It wasn't as flushed out, I guess. There was there was some good character moments in there. Like I like seeing yeah. Jamie and and Brock together. I like the part like, where she's like, "Yeah, I know that you're my dad, but and I don't care. Uh, and, I, I I love, that, and I love you anyways." I love you anyways. And then she dies right and after dies, that. And that's pretty that was good. a beautiful moment. The the, the Stan sisters or whatever they're fine, I they're guess. Fine, I guess. Uh, I like Auburn's wife. Over, I like her. She's pretty cool, I guess. Would you think the story would be better? Think about this: the story is basically the same, but the Dornish go to King's Landing instead of uh, them coming. I just feel like, like it just—it's weird. It's like she, he, Jamie. It's because like this whole arc is Jamie goes on a side quest to do this one thing, and then he, and then it does, and he spends a lot of time there, and like it's a large, and, and it, yeah. then it doesn't matter in the end. Like it just—it just feels like. Oh okay, that was a waste of time. Because like he, they could have, if the Dornish were like, "Well, we're gonna kill her," they could have just killed her and then. No, but to have her die right after she says it's okay that you're my dad this yeah. is a good moment. I, just I guess that. I just but, like that moment. Uh, but is it worth all that time? No, it's not moment? worth all that time. Because you could have done that in like two episodes. Okay, so you're saying they keep the arc, but it's only like two episodes long? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. I'm down for that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, most of the most of the stuff I do like in season five is just like, uh, yeah, like I don't know, there's something. Mm. It's just not as strong as some yeah. of the stuff. Yeah, like, I guess there's less. It more just kind of feels like everything's just kind of chugging along. Yeah, because like the other the arc, there's the less there's less the King's impactful. Landing stuff is all weird because it's the, the high, high spare high, high sparrow, sparrow and yeah. stuff. So like Cersei like basically militarizes the church and then. Marjorie and uh, Loras are put on trial. Yeah. And then um, uh, 
Cersei also gets captured because she, you know, it backfires on her because she's an equally terrible person. Yeah. Well, actually, she's the worst of all of them. Mm-hmm. Loras, that, and, um, Loras and Marjorie are just like, it's like, oh, Marjorie's like, oh, it's not gay because like, she doesn't want her brother to be dead. And it's like, oh, you lied because you wanted him to not be dead. And then yeah. he's gay. And that's like not really anything much she can do about. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's kind of like, it was technically adultery when it's like, but I guess he's more, he's more the mistress than the actual Mr. Oh, Sterling. like when, when he was... Like when he was with Renly, Renly right? Renly, so, yeah. like, he's not really, um... It's not really illegal, per se. It's just, like, uh-huh. he can't be gay. <laughs> like, yeah. he isn't really well, breaking just, any like, laws. It's not breaking laws, per se, but it's, like, because the church, that church, like, gets so much power that it's, like, yeah. well, that, in our in our rules, it says that it's a sin to be gay, so you can't have it. Yeah, so that's a lot of... That's a lot of season five is... Mm-hmm. And season six also is just kind of this back and forth between Cersei and the church. Yeah, but then it actually pays off. It actually six. pays off in season six. Like, is, so I guess we could talk about going season, season six, six yeah. and, then season I'll, and then I'll talk about Daenerys' story. Season six is great. I like it. <laughs> no, I think season six is good. I think it's, it's really good, really? except I feel like they brought too much back. Like, I yeah. told you what I think they should do with Jon Snow, what I think they should have done, and... Okay. Um, but they didn't, like, and um, it disappointed me. So this is so this is what I thought was actually yeah. going to happen because there was this clear setup, and there was n- and they didn't do it. And this character has done nothing since. So You're the right. red woman, yeah, she's like, oh, I'll try to bring back John or whatever. Like, I'll I'll try my best. Like, mm-hmm. so she just like cuts off some of his hair, puts it into a fire, washes his body, and then just kind of looks at it for a bit, and then they're like, oh, he's dead. And then he wakes up and he's fine and he's yeah. alive for the rest of the series. Yeah. What if, what if, <laughs> instead of all that, she does all that, and then she's like, ah, oh, fuck, I guess that didn't work, and then, like, everyone's just, like, kind of sad, so, like, I guess, I guess most of them leave the room, and then Davos, is that his name? The, yeah. The Sir one. Davos, yeah, Sir Davos is there, and he's like, well, you tried, or whatever, you know, like, you can imagine him saying something like yeah. that, he's like, you know, it's, give it her best shot. You give it her best shot, you know. <laughs> and then she's like, "No, there's something else." He's like, "No, there's more I can do. This is this is like he's the chosen one. Yeah. Remember this." She takes off her collar, then she gets all old, right? Right, because that's what. Yeah, because they showed that in the last one. And then she puts it on John, and as that happens, she like starts to like wither away and like completely decomposes. Like right. it's like her life force transfers into him, and then John's just like, oh! like holy shit, I'm alive! Like what the hell is this thing on my neck? And then he's like. And then Davos is like, oh my gosh, like, they, they just put that thing on your neck, right? So, like, and then, like, he can't take that off because that's, like, right. the only thing keeping, keeping him alive, him right? So, I just, I feel like it was, his revival was so inconsequential. Yeah. I feel like death should have consequences. In I know, of I know. Like, I'm, Game of Thrones, that's what I just, dis- that's what I was so disappointed about in season six with, like, when they brought back the Hound. It's like, oh, he's alive. Why? Because he is. Oh, because all right. Because um, we like him. Because we like him, and he hasn't really done anything since. That that's like but, only he could have done that. But he joined them on their superhero mission. I know he joined them on the super, the superhero mission in season seven was super fun. <laughs> it was so cool to see like all these characters who like like yeah. who like have never met are now now like teamed up. Yeah. To fight zombies, yeah, and that was zombies. that was so cool. That was such a good episode. Yeah. But if the Hound wasn't there, it wouldn't have taken away from the episode. Yeah. He no, didn't really add true. much to the episode. Yeah. The, There's a part where he's afraid of a flaming bear. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know. Like, I'm assuming at some point he's going to fight the mountain. Yeah, that's that's the only thing. That's the only that's reason why I could cool. think of him coming back. One of the theories I had uh, when I was, like, speculating, like, yeah. it'd be really cool if he fights the mountain and loses and dies and then Arya kills the mountain and it's like a thing. What do you mean? Like, like it's like like as as like that's like revenge for that. Oh, okay. And also because the mountain's on her list. Yeah. No, but that was so such like, a beautiful moment with Arya 
where the hound's like, come on, just fucking murder me. And then Arya's like, no, nah. this is this is better. I like watching you die slowly and then walks yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. That's that good. was such a good moment. Yeah. After that, that whole road trip together and then she's just like, well, you're dead now and I didn't really care about you. Yeah. And then later, the when they're playing the game of faces and stuff, it's like, she actually did care about him, but like she never lets it on. She never admits it. That she cared about yeah, yeah, the hound. That's cool. So it's just a cool relationship, and it kind of ruins it, in my opinion, when you bring him back because he really hasn't done anything. Yeah, anymore. it's true. Or Jon Snow, at least, like just loves him. Yeah, and so, he's and I'm like, oh, and okay, he's a major. So he's, character he's a such a central part yeah, of the story that like it makes sense. It makes sense. So I want. So that's my way of keeping the moment where all hope is lost, as well as having him come back in some way that doesn't completely suck. Yeah, it's also like. Like, um, yeah, because that is weird about the red woman, how, like, we have that episode where there's this reveal where it's like, oh, shit, she's actually really old and stuff. That's and interesting. It doesn't... But then what does that... It doesn't amount what to does that mean? mean? The only thing like, she's done to, since she revived Jon Snow is she went to Daenerys' house in Dragonstone. She's like, hey, Jon Snow wants to visit. Right. And then Daenerys is like, all right. Send him over. <laughs> <laughs> that's all she's done. That's all she's done, and yeah. that's all she does in season yeah. seven, right? That's true. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. The other thing I thought would, when I was watching um, season six, I was like thinking it'd be cool if when she tries to bring him back, she like fucked it up, and he comes back as a White Walker. Like that yeah. was my theory. But then that didn't happen. No, because he's fine. such a central part of the story. Like, all right, whatever. That's no, because the, then there's because season six has all the. It's kind of like the back and forth of, with the, the church in King's Landing. Yeah. Um, as part of season six, but also as like a, it's more a minor story, but there's the, the whole thing where Euron takes the Greyjoy crown. Yeah. So he's like leader of the Greyjoys and he's a huge asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's just a dick. Theon goes home. Uh, that's yeah, part of home. season six. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, basically everyone comes back to Winterfell. Uh, it's like Sansa. Well, Sansa ends up going back yeah, to... Go, yeah. Goes back to the... Well, finally meets Jon yeah, again. So we get some Stark... Gets, we get some more Stark reunions in, yeah. in Season 6. Um, which is, which is, see, like, that's such a great moment in Season 6. Because, like, they've been so through so much together. And they're, like, finally reuniting. Yeah. And it's like... Wow, like... It's really literally been since season one. Yeah, and there's been, been together. so much has happened, and like you feel it because it's literally about fifty hours of television. Yeah, between that and there and there, so like, like the last time they saw each other. Yeah. So it's like it's so it's such a good moment where it's like I felt that I've literally watched this for two days. You haven't seen each other in two whole days nonstop watching TV. <laughs> so it, you really feel it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's it's a great moment. moment. It's a great moment. And so, season season six has Sansa finally doing things like you know yeah. giving out military strategy ideas and whatnot. And then yeah, like what what we kind of hoped she would do in season five. It's like no, she actually does stuff now. In season, in season six, six, yeah, which is great. Um, whoa. Oh yeah, like because you start to get like you start to see like the things that the show is like actually. Has been building yeah, so like everything is building, is building and building, and there's the, the nurse, whole. The nurse now has the Dothraki. She has the. She's got the Unsullied. She's, she's got the Dothraki. Like, she's got her. Control of the, the, everything now. She's got a, a Greyjoy fleet. She's got. Yeah. Like like those last two episodes, the the battle of <laughs> the bastards, and just a great episode. Yeah, and the final episode, episode, which is probably my favorite episode of the show. <laughs> I I'm, really I'm, good. It's one that I rewatch like often. Really? Because How many times have you seen it? Like, like three or four times. Oh, okay. Like, um, the mu- the the music is so strong in that episode. Yeah, that was probably one of the most intense moments in the whole series for for me, at least. I know, I know you were you there when I my first time watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you were. So you got to see my intense first time reaction. Though, like, like holy shit! Oh yeah. my god! Like, I didn't say that, but like my my that that's what my brain was doing. First sequence with um the the. Um, Cersei's trial and stuff. Yeah, like all of that is just beautifully done and like so yeah. so intense and so 
the suspense is so strong, mm-hmm. and the music just builds and builds and builds until this like huge thing where it's like, holy fuck, she killed a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, where it's like I didn't like I knew you were scheming. Like most of her scheming is like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna marry you to this person because I don't like you, or yeah. I'm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be incest, and my kids are gonna be Lannisters, and you're not gonna know about it. So mm-hmm. Lannisters are on the throne, and I'm just gonna be manipulating and conniving and yeah. a huge dick to everyone. You know, I'm gonna kill Ned Stark, and I'm just gonna be conniving or whatever. And it's gonna be nice and subtle, and I'm not gonna technically break any laws, but I'm gonna exploit the legal system as much as mm-hmm. possible so that no one can really capture me. Right? That's yeah. kind of what she does. She yeah. straight up commits an act of terrorism. It's so much. It's so. It's like. It's like. It's. Yeah. It's. It's her style, but it's not what I expected. Mm-hmm. Like one like that. That's such a great scene when the one guy gets like shipped by a kid, yeah. and he's just like crawling, and he's like, is he's a Lannister? Like he's like her cousin or something. Right, he he yeah, kind of yeah. like got rid of his Lannister name to become part of the military church or whatever. Yeah. So like he's just and he's just crawling towards this candle and that's like, about to like blow oh, up all this wildfire, <laughs> and he's just like, oh fuck, I gotta <laughs> stop this. And the music is perfect, and then it just explodes. The whole thing explodes. Is that the Red Keep or like what is that? What is that building? The, even? It's like the church. It's like the main church. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like the it's just the whole and where they had like all the trials yeah, and stuff. They have the trials and stuff. So like. They're all, all those church guys are dead. All the church guys are all dead. The Tyrells, the Tyrells are dead. Are dead. <laughs> Everyone, uh, everyone's dead. Yeah. And then Tommen. And then Tommen kills himself. Kill is so that's such a good shot. It's just one shot. Yeah, He's it's just great. almost. It's one shot of him looking at the, the explosion, mm-hmm. like like from behind, and then yeah. just, and then it shows his face, and, he and, he's just, and then it shows his face. There's a, it cuts to a shot of him his face, and like it the crown, done. the crown's kind of like tilted on his head. I'm pretty sure. I thought it was just the one shot. No, then there's there's another shot. There's one shot of him looking at it, and then later there's the one shot. Right. Yeah. The then one the, shot there's the one shot the, where it's he walks is away. it zooming in or zooming out? Like, what is it? It's it's or is it just still? I think it might just be still because he's just like and he just stands there. For he a just second, stands there for a second, takes walks, off over, the ground, walks over, walks over, puts away. it down, walks back into frame, and he walks back into frame, and just walks, walks out the window, window, and it's like, oh fuck, <laughs> it's so dark and just yeah. beautiful and such a haunting image, like. Yeah, and there's almost like, like and there's very there's no music in that scene. It's just his footsteps, and it's just him, yeah. like, and the way he like extends his arms as he falls. He's just like he's ready to die. Like, yeah, he's, like there's not nothing care. left for me. And it's amazing too, because like, it's like Cersei pretty much killed him. Yeah, <laughs> and she was willing to do that. Like she was willing. Like she had to have thought that was a possibility. The that Tommen like, would have, that he would have not died, that he died or would have, would've, he would have hated her. Yeah, like he, she, she mm-hmm. accepted that. Yeah, but and she was willing to sacrifice that to 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 murder for revenge and to get the throne. Yeah, so it's like wow. So it just shows she's how like, like intense yeah, she is. Yeah, she's transitioned to full villain at that point. Yeah, which is. So good, yeah. Then season uh, season six also. I guess a lot of that last episode is just like all the things that we set up in the first episode are finally happening. Yeah, they're actually like out. like Winterfell belongs to the Starks again. Yeah, and like John, they make they they make Jon Snow king in the north, and they're like, "Yep, you're you're gonna lead us now because you're you're just that good." <laughs> yeah. Um. What else? Oh. Arya Arya kills. Oh, Arya Frey, kills Walder Frey, which is great. That's a great bit. Um, That's the first scene in season seven. Is um, oh, yeah, she kills the rest. She of the kills the rest of the phrase. Yeah, that's good. That was that such was a that's good. such a good bit. Um, um, and then what else? I'm trying to think what else. Oh yeah, uh, the 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 Greyjoys show up at uh, the nurse's house and they're like, "Hey, we got ships. You want ships? We got them. We got them." And they're like, "Cool." Let's have a team up. Uh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed team up. Team up. <laughs> yeah, they high five. Man. They, uh, <laughs> they do a three way high five. They do a three way high five. And Etheon misses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like there's him and his sister and Daenerys. They do a three way high five, but but <laughs> yeah. Theon misses though. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, all right. Because he's just he's sad Theon. <laughs> I, f- I have a feeling he's not going to be sad Theon now because he's been sad Theon since like season five and six. Like he's just been. Like, he was, was he ever not sad though? 
Season one, he was fine. I guess he was just kind of angsty. Yeah, he was like angsty it. Theon, and now he's sad Theon. And I think he's gonna be he's gonna be good Theon again. He's gonna yeah. be like, got to redeem. Himself. He's gonna be heroic Theon because he's gonna, like, I gotta save my sister. And he's like, screw you. And then it's like, no, I'm gonna beat you up on this beach. And I'm gonna save my sister. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, I want to talk about before we talk about season seven. So yeah. I guess that was all of season six. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk. Can we talk a little about the Battle of the Bastards? Yes, bit? because that's, that's an a great, amazing one. episode. Like, okay, that one shot where it's the one tracking shot. Yeah, it just, like it's so good. Like it's so well done. It just like it looks flawless. Like it cuts yeah. a couple times, and you can kind of tell it's where they so were. So well cut, done, and it's, it's so hectic. It's yeah. such a crazy battle. Like I've never seen, I've never seen a fight like a huge battle scene that crazy where I could actually tell what was going on. And you can on. tell what's happening. Yeah, and you, you can, can tell how crazy it is for the characters, but also you can follow who's good and who's bad. And, yeah. And, it's, like, it's really well done. Yeah, it's just it's brilliant filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and, um, okay. So, I love the one bit when, um, when Jon Snow, he's, like, because he, like, he rides out by himself at first, right? So he can try to save Rickon. But then, like, Rickon just dies because Ramsey's a yeah. dick. And, like, he just... Yeah, yeah, yeah of that, course that was going to happen, right? And yeah, it's, that like, part's so, it's so heartbreaking. That part's really cool. Because they do this thing where they do what the normal... Like, they, they trick you, kind of. Like, they play with the regular film rules. Cause he, they do the build-up. He's drawing the bow. Oh, he's look Like, they do all the... The build-up shots, the music's like getting more intense. Tense. He dr- he draws, he shoots, he misses. He draws, he shoots, he misses. The third time, he draws, he shoots, yeah. he misses. And yeah. then they're like, and then and then they like pause for a second. It's like, oh, he made it. And then he just he gets shot. With an, and then an arrow comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And it's it's it's. Uh, I've seen like a bunch of videos where they like talk about this because it's really it's a really well done. It's really well done. <laughs> and like when I was watching it again with you, it was like. The scene is still intense, and I yeah. know exactly what's going to happen. Oh, I know. But the tension was just still it's, so well done, yeah. and it just worked. Um, and, like, I, yeah. I just love the moment when, because um, that was a crazy moment for me, because I didn't really expect it. Mm-hmm. When, um, other than, like, Rickon being murdered, like, right after that, like, this is a standout moment for the fight scene, in my opinion, when John John still just kind of standing there, and he sees he sees the army heading towards him. And he's just like, all right, I'm going to fucking die. This is it. This is yeah. it. And he pulls out his sword and he takes off the sheet, like the belt, like the yeah. sheath. He and just like, throws it on the ground. He's like, I don't even need this anymore because yeah, I'm, I'm not, there's no way I'm putting this sword back in. Like there's no, I'm not even going to make it out of this yeah. battle. It's the, and you see the army heading towards him and that's the, it. And he's got the sword there and he's like, this is fucking it. And then you see like this, like, and then it goes to a profile shot of the entire army going towards him. Then you see the entire army behind him, and it's just insane yeah. from there on out. It's and you're like, holy crap, like, yeah. what is even happening? It's, it's the, so dirty. It's the moment in, in Return of the King. Like, no, but, it's, but you don't know that the army is going to follow him. Though. Yeah, so, yeah, that's It's true. like you don't know the army. You didn't, I'm like, I don't even think they'll be able to catch up in time. Like, yeah, like, like I thought he was like, I'm like, this fun. is it. Like, because the show... I guess that's part of... I'll get into why I don't like revivals as much after that. Because, like, that's so... Such a good moment. And then that whole... And then the tracking shot comes, like, shortly after that. And it's just such a good, crazy fight that's just so dirty compared to a yeah. lot of the other fight scenes we've seen. Where it's, like, it's almost like an entire sea of Brian of Tarth versus the Hound. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, and there's parts where, like, you think, like, where he's, like, getting... Where it's mostly from John's perspective. There's a point yeah. where he's, like covered by a couple bodies, and there's all kinds of people running on top of him, and he can barely breathe, and, like, the way it's shot is so good, because, like, they show, they cuts between POV and, like, an overhead view, mm-hmm. and the overhead view, you just see a bunch of legs, yeah. and then the POV shot, you just see, like, black, like, flashing over, <laughs> yeah. like, like, at any time, over 50% of the screen is not visible, Yeah, and it's it's really well done. Yeah, like, and you think, like, and that the, would there's, be, like, heavy breathing and stuff. I think like, that would be, like, just gross and not entertaining to watch because it's like, oh, I can't tell at all what's happening. No, but it's like, you but just feel, it, it just feels so claustrophobic. Yeah, it, it just works. Like, it's it's just so, it, it's, the, the way they put it together and the way it's like, I don't know, and stuff, it just, it's, it, it's, it, 
captures the feeling perfectly. Um, the like the craziness and the, and the panic and the like not being able to breathe and the claustrophobia, like all of that is captured. Mm -hmm. But you can still like it. It's not like crazy shit you can't where you can't see what what where anything's happening or anything. Like it just it it's still you're still able to follow the story. Mm -hmm. it's, which is why it's so very difficult to yeah. pull off. But, and so that's one of the most, probably one of the most well done battles in the yeah. the, se in the series. It's probably, it might be my favorite even, like between like that Blackwater. Um, the, yeah, the like big battles. Yeah. The Blackwater, the, 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 the Siege wall. of Castle Black. And, yeah, and that one. And that one. Those are the three like biggest battles. Just, yeah. This is the huge, uh, I guess that's the huge fight in season five, episode eight. The last oh, half yeah. of that episode is just... It's just a big battle, too. It's just a big battle. Just a, like, a bunch of wildlings and Jon Snow fight a bunch of zombies, and then you just see the army, and it's not even, like, the huge army yet. Like, it's just, like... Yeah. It's a smaller version of what we see later. Yeah. But it's still so ridiculous. You're mm -hmm. just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that one's... That's... Because that's one where, like, this is, like... Because, like, you hear about the White Walkers, and you see, yeah. like, a few... But, like, you never see them really go to town on people. Yeah. Like until, they do it, until that until episode. That. That's the episode where you're like, "Oh my gosh, Westeros is screwed." Yeah, this is what I was. Oh shit, this is what we were. This is what we were worried about. Waiting for like this is what we wanted, like that. Yeah, yeah. Another um, great one from season six, the the door, hold the door. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite <laughs> moments really in the whole series. It's so good. It was so ah oh, ah. Oh. I remember telling you about that as soon as I watched it, because I'm like, I have to talk to someone about this, because this was so good. It's yeah. just such a good moment. Like, it's... It's just brutal there's... and heartbreaking, and, like, it's just that entire character's life is, is like, it captured in that, yeah. the whole scene, and you're just like, yeah. oh, oh, that's why, oh, no, that's terrible. It's, oh, my gosh. His whole life was built to that one moment. Has been built around the fact that he's basically disposable. Yeah. And like, he he his whole life was building to this moment where he sacrifices himself so that like Bran can get away. Yeah. And it's like, damn, that's that's dark, and that's like, and this like the, that, he's been that, he's been messed up. Like this is like, and it but it's like it's so it. it's not just like oh they've been building this up all season. It's like no, no this is something that they thought about. Since the moment he was introduced in season yeah. one, the, like George R. R. Martin's like, this guy's, yeah. he says Hodor because I know that six seasons from now, six, yeah. five books later, I'm going to have this beautiful moment where I kill him off. And that's like the sign of like, well done plot twist. Yeah. That's how you know it's a good plot twist because it wasn't, because, because you have to finish the story before you can even start it. When it comes to things like that, yeah, yeah, like it's where it's, it's like he he would have had to think of that. He's like, oh, there's this guy who just says Hodor all the time, right? And then he's like, and like, so like he's like he kind of sets him up as like this kind of like, you know, like grunt type character who's just kind of like he's just kind of the muscle and he's good at carrying things. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty big. He's this mentally he's not, he's challenged not, guy. He's not really much of a fighter. All he can say is Hodor, but he understands English. So he's just kind of, he's kind of comical and like, yeah. you know, he's a bit of a goof, you know, that's like, and that's, that's it. And like, they, you just kind of, it's just kind of works like with a, the rules. He's of the like, universe. he's like, um, uh, the giant in, uh, in, this bride or yeah, bit. yeah. Where it's like it just kind of works with the rules of the universe. Like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You know, people there will probably be people like this. You know, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Season six is when like this kind of that's when Bran finally starts talking to Max von Sydow, and Max von yeah. Sydow is like, check this out, check out. Um, it's like, oh, you can go to the past and stuff, and you can you can look at like that whole ending. Like that's like a good like twenty minute ending of that yeah. episode. And before, like earlier in the season, he's like, oh look, it's. Hodor, and he can talk. His name's oh, like yeah. Sam and stuff, or yeah. something. Yeah, he has a regular name. He's got a regular like, person doesn't... name. Like this is this is so cool. Like oh, I love, I love being able to time travel. This yeah. is so cool. You don't know it's time travel. It's more like, it's more like, oh, I can just kind of look into the past. It's yeah, that's like, what it, it feels it, like the Harry is. Potter memories almost. There's a point it, it, in, it, 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 and they set this it, up. Yeah. They set this up also yeah. Yeah. that you can affect it the past. Because when he sees his, because when he sees uh, his, his he sees his dad, he's like. 
wait, is that is that my dad? And then Ned Stark just kind of turns around. He's like, what the hell? What the hell was that? What was that? Who said that? And then he looks back and he's like, oh well, I'll just I'll just go back into this castle. And then and then Bran's like, hmm, that was kind of weird. I didn't know I could do that. So when when Bran goes back in time and Max von Sydow's talking to him and he's like, yo, you have to fucking go. And then you hear, um, what's her face? She's just like, hold the door, yeah. hold the door. And then like Bran hears that and then he's yeah, like, he kind of then he's like, what's he, that? And then he's like, what the fuck? And then like he's like, he sees Hodor and he sees his eyes go white and he just drops to the ground. But he's like young though. And I'm like, oh my gosh! Like it's the music also. Yeah, the music is was beautiful. Yeah, it was such a good score and and like. Just that moment of realization, and then it's like, it's like he ruined this guy's life, and you see that on his face. He's like, yeah. "Oh shit, and, and I did like, this. I made this." And then you're like, and then like right after that, you're like, "One time travel is confirmed. Two, it's closed loop time travel." Yeah, because because so, it's like Hodor. It's anything that he's done. He's already if he, done. If he goes back and does something in the past, it's already. So he knows yeah. at that point that he can't actually so he like, can't, like he can't go back in time. He can't go back and, and kill Cersei yeah, Lannister as a kid or anything that. like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's so. Oh, it's so. And, and so like we and we also know like there's there's this like idea of destiny now too because like Bran is like he's like you're the three eyed yeah. raven now because Max von Sydow gets like killed by the Night King. I'm pretty yeah. sure. And like it's it, that whole end of that episode functions like I want to go back to the end of that episode because it functions like it's almost like a mini zombie apocalypse movie yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's exactly <laughs> it's like oh we're we're yeah. like oh we're just kind of hanging out this one place it's like oh the, zom- the zombies here. found us they uh, try to fight them off all the characters get picked off one by one until there's only two left there's only two left that get away and then it ends <laughs> and then you know, like so it's based and it's like it was just it's kind of like a story underneath the story right yeah. it's oh that's just such a good moment and like, so I guess season six has like a lot of my favorite moments. Yeah, but why I don't like bringing back the Hound, and and I start to notice this in season seven as well. I guess there'll be a longer one cast because I haven't That's talked right. about. It's fine. But anyways, yeah. when it comes to the Hound and like Jon Snow and stuff, what I don't like about that is that the show did such a good job of creating <clears> this <throat> world in which. Any, anyone could die. Yeah. Like, it's not like whenever people talk about Game of Thrones, they're like, oh, everyone dies, don't get too attached. It's like, no, that's not how it works. It's anyone can die. It's not that everyone dies. There yeah. are definitely people who don't die. Yeah. There are people who live. Like, there's so many characters that are still alive right yeah. now that they, they introduced in the first season. <laughs> but it's that, that intensity behind the fact that anyone can die. Which brings me back to why I love the the fight between Brian of Tarth and the, and the Hound is because that universe is so well established that you know that one of them is not coming out alive, which makes the fight so much more intense. It's yeah. not like when you're watching Star Wars Clone Wars, which I've heard is a really good show, apparently, but you'll never have a moment as intense as that because you know, you, you know you're like, oh, here's Count Dooku and Anakin oh, are fighting for the fight. billionth time. What's that? Oh, they both come out alive? Yeah. Okay. I don't care. I know they're both in episode three, so why do I give a shit? Like, why do I have to watch this? I, mean, I already know what's going to happen. Like, yeah. it's it might just be the prequel I just think, but like, you yeah, can also say that about other t- about, other TV shows. Like, yeah. like let's say like The Flash. Like, like let's say it's like season three, episode two. This is random. This, sorry, these are random numbers okay, of The yeah. Flash. Let's say any episode of The Flash, he's fighting the main villain, but it's not the season finale, and you kn- you know that neither of them are going to die. Game yeah. of Thrones wouldn't care. Yeah, it exactly. would kill off either of them. Like, it's why it's so yeah. good. Yeah, why I love not, most of the show. And, and it's really cool, too, because it's, like, not strictly good versus evil, either. No, no not, not for the... Like, evil, evil... It's, it's not like, oh, good's, good's gonna triumph this time. It's, like, not evil... Anyone could die. Like, yeah. Which is why it's... Yeah. Uh, so good, like, Cause, like um, yeah, because there's this. The stakes are, are real, and even though, like Oberon versus the Mountain, that's another yeah, really good that, one. Exactly, that's because like that's both in season four. That's that, why I love how, season four. If that if this was any other show, Oberon would win that fight. Yeah, but this and is he not, almost does. This is not any other show. So if he gets but, cocky and basically but he gets wins. too cocky, and then he gets his head crushed. I know. I did not see that coming at all. Where it's like, where it's like, it's like the. Because it's the it's the it's the hello, hello my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Yeah. Prepare to die. Moment. He's like, oh, you 
It's like you you um you raped my sister. You murdered her. You killed her children. Is what yeah. he keeps saying to him, and yeah. it gets more and more intense as he like flips around him with his spear and stuff. And like yeah. Oberon could have beat him if he didn't get so cocky, and he basically defeats him. Like he stabs him in the chest with a spear yeah. and poisons him several times. And you're like, oh my gosh, he just did it. Like, that's so crazy that the mountain is dead. Like, yeah. that guy who's, who's, who's just a, a giant he's person. He's just a giant person. He's just seemed <laughs> unstoppable. And he's gone. And then the mountain freaking, it's like if you're watching Princess Bride and, like, after he stabs the guy, he's like, yeah. And I killed your father like this, and then like <laughs> decapitates a Nico Montoya. Yeah. The mountain turns over, he says, Yeah, I fucking did it like this, and he explodes his head with his bare hands, yeah. and you're just like, Oh my god, oh my god, and this is this is also Tyrion's life that's on the line. Yeah, he's also it's like, oh well Tyrion's fucked now too. Yeah. And just... like oh, it's such a good moment. Like I love the there's one point where Tyrion has a conversation with Jamie in season four, which is a oh, it's such a good moment. Because, like, Jamie's like, Tyrion's like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if you uh, volunteered to fight for me in trial by combat? Because yeah. if you die, then Father gets to see both of his male heirs destroyed with one foul swoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, then, and Jamie's like, that would be a fun way to get back at Father. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. Like, like, isn't it great that we're brothers and that we kind of we kind of have a thing where we're brothers occasionally? Yeah. Even though you're in a prison cell and, and I haven't really done much to help you get out. Yeah. Well, he's, he admits, like, even if I did, yeah. even if I did um, do it for you, I'm not as good a fighter anymore, because I lost yeah. my hand. Yeah. And I don't know that I could beat the mountain. Yeah. Like, and it, even if I, even if I got lucky, and even if I avoid, managed to avoid any of Getting his, killed. Any of his attacks or anything. Yeah. Like, I might not, I still might not. Yeah, be able to do it, and then fuck, right? <laughs> yeah, and then and then, and then Tyrion's like, "Oh, that'd be funny though <laughs> if that happened, just to get back at our dad <laughs> by dying." <laughs> yeah, by getting killed. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. I think that's those are most of the big moments, I guess, that I really like from most of the series. Now I kind of want to talk about um, Daenerys' story. Okay, because season one. I thought Daenerys, Daenerys was pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it was, probably, it was, it was actually best, it was one of her best stories with season one, probably yeah. where she's like basically like sold into slavery and like raped and shit, and then she's like, you know what, I'm gonna try to make the best of this. So she learns the language and she, you know, kind of accepts her role as a queen and kills her brother and stuff. So like, it's almost like it, like it's something that she gets sold into slavery by her brother, right? Mm-hmm. And her, and then. Her brother, when her bro- the moment her brother dies, it stops being about being sold into slavery by her brother, and starts being more about like just kind of her and how she is as a person, mm-hmm. and it's more about her power and yeah, more, like her potential and stuff, right? So she turns it into she turns it around and makes it about how strong she is as a character. But in season two, I'm pretty sure that season's pretty much they just go to this one place. They go to a place, and, and then like, hey, she's like, hey, can I have ships or something? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, so like, and can then, I have some ships, please? And the guy's like, sure, you, you just have to marry me or whatever. And she's like, all right, sure. And then and then her dragons get stolen, and then that guy gets mm-hmm. is sleeping with another woman, and they just kill him, and then that's it. And they leave, they get the dragons back, and I'm like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that, that thing at Blackwater was really cool. Um, I don't really care about what, what's going on here. Yeah. Um, season three, she goes to some guy and he's like, oh, I've got an army and this really cool translator. She's like, I'll trade you I'll one of my dragons for that. And then he's like, super cool. Nice trade. And then she's like, dragon, kill him. And I'm like, wow, didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a what a move, Daenerys! You're really you're a really brilliant schemer, aren't you? <laughs> you're, like it's not, yeah, it wasn't really a part like a like a well thought out plan. It was just like let's just hope my dragons that I can barely control can kill this guy in time for me to control his army. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? And then she just kind of like frees them, and then she's like, "All right, guys, kill everyone here. That's bad. We're gonna go free more slaves." 
Yeah. So then they go to Marine, right? Or is it uh, they stop the Second Sons or a thing at one point? There's some yeah. other guys who she gets help from because well, well, she's about to take the one city. Is that in season three or four that she's about to take the one city? And then, uh, when do they recast the one guy? I think uh, it's season, season four. four then. Okay, so then season three, she's like, all right, I need to take this one city, but ooh, there's this other army that kind of opposes me, and then. And then her way of stop... She doesn't have a way of stopping them. They just kind of stop themselves because the one guy kills the other two assholes and says, I pledge myself to you. And, like, it just, like, it just works out for her. Like, she didn't have any contingencies. (laughs) She wasn't... She's not a very good battle strategist or really that intelligent of a person at this point. She has dragons. Yeah, Danny, I know she has dragons. That's her only character trait. (laughs) Other than, like, she has... Like, like, she's fireproof. Yeah, I know. I know. The there's, some, there's some really cool stuff. She's the Breaker of Chains. That's mostly season one, which was she's the Mother of Dragons. Well, that stuff is season one. Season one, she was really cool. Season three, she's just like, you're not a smart person, are you? Like, it just kind of <laughs> works out for her just because. Like, it's just like, it's more just like, oh, good thing that kind of worked out, you know? She's, she's going on her quest. She's going to free all the slaves. But she doesn't have any well thought out plans. She doesn't need well thought out plans. No, but drag. like you think, but things just kind of work out for her just because they do. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not because she's particularly smart or because she is. Uh, she knows because she's strong, right? Well, season four, she just kind of takes Marine, right? That's yeah, what, yeah, and then and then it's like, oh, okay. That was easy. <laughs> she like kills all the slave people there, right? Like all the but, slave drivers. But that's the whole arc of Marine is that it. Yeah, it's hardly been yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. That's what that's what that's what that turns into. And I know it does, but um, and that's but that goes on for like three seasons after that, and then there's the sons of the harpy that she's got to deal with, and you know stuff like that, and yeah. it's pretty cool. And then Tyrion comes in, and makes her story better. Yeah, but she that's really true. there isn't a moment where she really proves herself as not being naive. What about? Well, that's what she needs because she's like, oh, if I just go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go back to Westeros, and they're just gonna like accept me as their queen. It's like when Tyrion's like, uh, that's not how that works. <laughs> you can't just do that. It just show. She's up. like, what do you mean I can't just do that? What, what's wrong with you? Can't uh, I just? Uh, but I have dragons. Uh, I have dragons. Like that's. I feel like I I told you this before, but I haven't told it to all our viewers. Mm-hmm. But like, I guess part of her character that bothers me is that. Um, she kind of holds herself like a villain and very coldly delivers dialogue as if she's super cunning, but really isn't that intelligent. <laughs> so that's that's kind of why, I, mean, I guess that's kind of why that bothers me. Like, just like if she yeah. was more passionate and less cold and detached when she was talking to people, I feel like I would have liked her more as a character. Like, she was more like, no, like, fuck you, you're all going to die because I hate all of you. And slavery is the worst thing ever. She's like, no. You're going to die, because I said so. It's a pity that you all suck, kind of thing. Like, Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I like I like Daenerys. She's and just been a very intense individual. I think she is, though. Like, she's always shouting about her dragons and how, like, badass she is. And she's really mad. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, everything she does is, like, super, like, dramatic and, like, Oh, uh, well, you can't just free slaves overnight. And she's like, well, yes, I can, because I got dragons, and I'm going to kill anyone who says otherwise. And, like, but she's also kind of naive, though. Like, that's yeah. Why, that's why I, don't think it, I just don't think it's a good combination. It's just not, it's not a winning combination, in my opinion. I guess. I don't know. I like Karen. <laughs> you just she like has, dragons. You know? She has dragons! <laughs> what more do you need for a character? <laughs> Oh, cool dragons. Sold. Oh. <laughs> I'm sold. All right. 10 out of 10. Wood dragon again. <laughs> All right. I guess you can talk about you season, season seven. 7, which I watched all of this week pretty much. Nice. I um, guess that's all I did this week. What did you think, I guess? Oh, it was good. I, I really liked it. I really liked that. Like, it, like it's, it's really cool because everything that they built up in season 1, like, the first thing where it's like season six is kind of like the end of season six is kind of like mm-hmm. this launching point where it's like this is all the huge shit that all the prophecies yeah. and shit are all about this is what everything has been building to 
And then season seven is just all the things happening. And it's really cool yeah. to see everything just kind of happen. Do you think it should have been a full season? Yeah, it should have been a full ten episodes. Like, there yeah. was so much in there that they could have flushed out. And I feel like there was a lot of characters that were kind of missing in a lot of the scuffle. Like, I'm sure the Red Woman was doing something important. Um, I remember, like, season, like, you watched like, the first few episodes, and then, like, they're like there's, like, a last time on Game of Thrones thing that plays occasionally. Right, right, yeah. And, like, for episode six, no, episode seven, they play, like, Theon, like, He's like, oh no, and like Theon like jumps off the boat or whatever, right? They show you yeah. that. It's like, oh yeah, I guess I haven't seen Theon in the last three episodes. Right after that happens. After that happens. Like, after that happens, the Greyjoys like, like he's there, but he doesn't really do anything. No, like it's not. They're not really yeah. important until later. So it's like, I guess you could do that. But if this was, I bet if this was a full ten episodes, you could have flushed out mm-hmm. that, right? Yeah, and like one of the things I thought was, like at the, uh, they could have done is like at the end of season six. They build up that okay, Daenerys is, is made alliance with the the remaining Tyrell chick. What's her name? The old lady. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um and um and the and the Dornish. Yeah. And and she also has the uh, the Greyjoys now. Yeah. And she's like, and like those guys were gonna like have. Fight with the the Sir, the Lannisters, yeah. Basically, like they were kind of building up that that was going to be like the major conflict for the, the next season, and like that could have been a whole like war, yeah. But it was kind of just like, well, we don't have time for that because we got to because the White Walkers are coming, you know. No, but I feel like and so like the one like the few battles that we saw were just like. Yeah, so we're going to take Castle Rock. Oh, what's that? The Tyrells are all dead now? Oops. Oops. I guess this war is almost done. <laughs> and then, like, oh, we're going to go... We're going to go... Uh, drive our ships to New Lands. Like, they're going to... I don't, I don't remember what they were doing. But the Greyjoys are, like, going off to do a thing. And then... Uh, their uncle just shows up and, like... Kills oh, they were gonna get the Dorn. They were, they were gonna get the. Um, they were gonna move the Dornish and um, what is it? The, the um, Tyrell army to King's Landing because they're like, we, if you want to take King's Landing, we can't do it with a foreign army. We have to do it with the right. people here because then that'll be because people will relate to that. They'll be like, oh no, that that makes because that's not just some foreign invader. It's like no, we agree as a nation that we all hate Cersei Lannister. Yeah. So yeah, that's what that's what made that. Important. Yeah, and so then, it was just but then like, they all, but then the, when all the ships get wiped out, I was like, oh, I guess that's not a thing anymore. Is, it, is the Dornish army still there? Who knows? Who knows? They got they, they got, captured the main Dornish. They, they got the main ones. They killed all the other ones. The, the, the Sand Sisters or whatever they're called, and they captured what's her name, the leader Dornish girl, yeah. the Dornish Oberyn's girlfriend. Yeah. And, and it's like, well, I guess they're not a thing, a thing anymore. And so it was like, it, it was like this weird thing. Cause it's like, okay, you have all these like major players that are like, you know what, Cersei, fuck you. And then like two of them just get wiped out. Like, like it's nothing. And it's like, oh, I guess those, we had, though we had like too many characters for the writers to work with. So we just had to get rid of them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I feel like that's like kind of like the natural progression though of the story. I think it yeah, works, but it works just, mostly because it does to some extent. It's just like this. There's like so much that has to happen mm-hmm. in these seven episodes that like everything that does happen feels like, wait, what? Yeah, where did that come from? And like how people can travel they between can travel, the, the, the north and the south, and they, like and then within yeah, a couple cuts, they they suddenly unlocked fast traveling and. Like, <laughs> And like all this like stuff that normally mm-hmm. would take people a whole season to get from one place to another. Like, yeah. Now it's literally between scenes and, and yeah, stuff like that. Well, I get one like Daenerys like rode a dragon. Like, yeah, that like makes sense. I I mean yeah to some extent because that's even that when she rides all the way to <laughs> they're the like there for like a day. I'm yeah, sure. they're there for over a day, but like. 
the, does, the does guy, he feel like it because it's not the no, guy drawn out over a course of a couple episodes? Just yeah, the guy episode. runs. The one guy runs all the way back. He's like, "Quick, send the Raven to Daenerys." And then the Raven gets there like immediately, mm-hmm. and then she rides her dragon there and saves them all. And it's just yeah. like it's a little convenient. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, and the like. Like if it was a couple, like if that was stretched over the course of two episodes, it probably yeah, would've, it would have worked better. Like if they're, I don't know if they're, I don't know, maybe they're not trapped on a thing or, or I don't know. But it but could yeah, be it you, could be that they're stretching. Somehow like, they're it just it's okay. Like, somehow they're trapped. Let's just say yeah. that they're trapped somehow. Not necessarily in that kind of way, but like they're yeah they're, they they're, they're get, boxed yeah. in. They can't get they they can't get back. They can't get back and. They can't. They're also they're safe technically from the dead, but also they can't get back. So like they're they're in a position where it's easy to attack them, but yeah, it's hard for them to get out. To, yeah, to escape. Right. So they. So it could be it could be that position, but it could be it could be whatever. Right. But basically, you have that be the end of the episode. Yeah, and then they send the raven. Right, right and then the next the episode, end. the next episode opens with the one guy running. Yeah, and he's like, oh fuck, send a raven. Shit, and then the entire rest of the episode happens. Then you cut at the end of the episode. You cut back to them, just chilling there, like we're gonna die. We're all gonna die here. And then Daenerys yeah. shows up. Yeah, that would have helped. Like I think if they just, had, just, I think if you just did all the things that happened in the season, but you had like three more episodes, it would have just like felt more complete. More complete. Yeah, it would have just filled in some of the gap. No, but a lot of... I but really like liked a lot of the things that happened in yeah. season seven. I, I do as well, Like because the, there's so much like, oh shit, we... Like, there's one of the things that's great about that one is, oh shit, we got the dragons versus the ice zombies, which is like yeah. something that we... And I'm like, there's the one point where like, where... And you it know, finally happens, and it's cool. There's the one part where the night... Is it the night... I'm pretty sure it's the Night King... He like gets yeah. like an ice spear, and, just, and, he, and no, no, he's just he's just like he's he's lining up a show. I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna he's just gonna straight up murder Jon Snow right now. And then he's like, wait, no, no, he's pointing it at the sky. Oh my gosh, wait, can he can he do that? Can is that a thing? Can kill the dragon? can he actually kill a dragon? And so then when he kills a dragon, you're just like, oh my gosh, that happened, and like you just feel that like that was like super like, and you're just like, oh my gosh, no, it's like yeah, it's like what there's. The whole I have three full grown dragons thing isn't a thing you could say anymore. Like that's that was most of your character. Like you can't one third of her personality is gone. gone. Like it's but like it's almost like the um it's almost like I guess she's based off of Seto Kaiba in a lot of ways because of like, the, <laughs> the three blue eyes white dragons. I've never kind of thought thing. of that. I just thought of that now. It's like he's like he's like I've got three blue eyes white dragons. It's like if one of those dragons just died and then it's like Kaiba's only got two blue eyes white dragons now. Like. I need to make okay. We need to redo the the Lannister logo, but with blue eyes white dragons. <laughs> That's something we could do during the vlog tonight. Yeah. Just in Photoshop, just make it with the blue eyes white dragon. Because there's so the one funny. three-headed dragon. So she's basically. Oh, I never thought of that. I just thought of that now. I don't know no, why. No one ever thought of. I don't that. know. It's so like the, the same character. <laughs> like they're like, literally the same. But how? Like because like because I was like whole thing is like. He's just obsessed with blue eyes. Like, like he has a private jet that looks like a blue eyes. Like, <laughs> like he's, he's really committed. Like he is, he, cause he's like rich, right? Yeah. So he makes like uh, a theme park, like Disneyland, but it's Kaiba land. And it's like, everything's like the blue eyes while you're driving. <laughs> like everything's like a blue eyes. I want to remember this. I, I only know this cause of like the, the abridged series. Oh, okay. <laughs> They just make fun of that. Yeah, they just make fun but of it. I appreciate like, the British series practically writes itself. Yeah, because they, they don't. The show is so ridiculous. The show is, is not that good. Like <laughs> uh, <laughs> these colored bars say that Obelisk's power is really powerful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna call her Seto Kaiba from now on. That's the biggest plot twist that's, 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 that's happened for nothing is, cast. Is, so I'm gonna make I'm making that tonight then I guess on Photoshop after we we edit <laughs> stuff. When do you wanna stop tonight? Like uh the morning. Like eight AM or like seven AM. Seven or eight. Alright. <laughs> Alright. We'll see how tired we are. Um Oh yeah. So the other thing I wanted to mention 
about season seven. Yeah. yeah. So, so when we were watching the final episode there. Yeah. Um. And like the stuff with um. One of the things I didn't like about season seven is the stuff with uh with with Baelish, Lord Baelish, Littlefinger. What's wrong with that? Like, he just they just kill him and that's it. I like it makes sense because it's like oh yeah, phew, finally they're done with that guy. Like oh it's good that they finally thought to not trust him. Yeah. But like on rewatch, it doesn't really work because like the whole time they're they're playing it like oh he's manipulating them. Oh no, what's gonna happen? And then at the last second, they're like, we you stand they were, they were, charged for these charges, Lord Baelish. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> and it's like supposed to be like this plot twist, and it, and it doesn't work when you Why? watch. Because it's like, because you're just like, oh, I Because you know it's going to happen, and, and the scenes don't work the other way when you rewatch them, which when Baelish is like trying to manipulate her, like it doesn't work as... She's secretly manipulating him. It doesn't. It doesn't play that way. Like, there's no hints of that. Yeah. There's that's no true. like. Because it just. Seems no, they like, didn't go back. It wasn't like it wasn't like Arya's like, oh, you thought you were playing us, but we were actually playing you. And then the time. And then you show and you show a scene of Sansa and Arya, yeah. and like 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 um like maybe they're like they have like an argument. You show one of the scenes where they have an argument, mm-hmm. and then Lord Baelish watches and he just kind of sneaks away, and then like mm-hmm. Arya like walks back in the room and like winks at Sansa or something. And they wake and. They high five and they high five. Yeah. yeah, even if it's something cheesy like yeah, that. like the, no, but something something more subtle where like Arya as she walks away, like as like they like have an argument. Whatever, Lord, they see Lord, like you you see Lord Baelish. She's watching them have like an argument, mm-hmm. and then he like like walks away, and then as, like Arya is like walking away from Santa, and then she stops and like turns around, and mm-hmm. just kind of nods. Yeah, exactly. Like, something like that. Even where if, it's like even if like maybe you don't want to do those like obvious like flashbacks and stuff because that's yeah. like. Not not really the style of Game of Thrones, yeah. But like, it that's what it should have been because it should have been like it should have been something like that because it should have been there should have been hints of that throughout it. Like it should have been more like <coughs> Sansa is now playing the Game of Thrones, and so like every scene that like she should be going head to head with Baelish at this point. But it's played like oh no, he's manipulating her. He's like still doing his Baelish thing. But what it should be is like. He's like, hey, you know, like, uh, you can't trust your sister because she's like an assassin now, and she's, and then she like throws something right back at him, where it's like, well, why, why should I be able to trust you, or like, why should like, or like that, where it's like, it's like, you know, you think, it's like if you think you, um, it's like if you think my sister is untrustworthy, you should take a look at the other Stark girls, and then just like walks away. Yeah, or, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not a Game of Thrones writer, so I don't know like how. Yeah. Well, how to write that kind of stuff. Yeah, but like basically, we're just like layered should, dialogue. But right? maybe he, he's like, oh, you're watching out for your sister, and then she should say something like, you should watch out for me, and just walks away. Yeah, and yeah. You're just like, what? Like, well, ooh, okay. Yeah. And Because it's. Cause, nice. Because, like, when I was rewatching the, uh, the one the one where. The Battle of the Bastards, and the part where, um, what's his name? The other Rickon gets killed. Yeah. Like, that scene still is intense, and there's still tension, and it still works. Yeah. Well, on rewatch. Where, like, the one where they're like, you stand on trial, Lord Baelish. That one does not work at all. Like, I'm just like, okay, whatever. You just activated my trap card. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and, like, I'm like, I, I don't care about anything they're saying now. Like, they, they, it's just, I mean, you know, are just going to kill him, and then that's it. Like, there's no, there's no tension. There's no tension on when you know what's gonna happen, and, and it's too bad because like, and also like, Baelish is like so manipulative and so like uni- he's so like unique morally and like like he's such a slimy character that like he always seems to get away. Like he never see- like that. It's like. Why was this time the one thing that the one time that he did get away and like like he didn't like why was this time the time where they caught up to him like yeah because like it seemed like he should have been able to get out of that situation but but they were like you stand on trial and he's like what oh no all my cards are gone it's like what how did this happen like well it's, maybe it's because he thought he was playing them so we had no contingencies. That's his, Wait, thing, that's so his thing is that he always has a contingency. What's the contingency? Exactly, he doesn't have one. No, but I mean, like in other scenarios. In other scenarios, like like he'll he'll 
he'll kill um uh son like he, he kills um what's her name the chick that he marries just so that he like he marries her just so he can kill her and, and gain her power and gain her power Leanna yeah the, uh, yeah Leanna. 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 I thought I thought that or was Lyra or something. Lyra yeah yeah Le- Lyra no Leanna's is Ned Stark's sister yeah. like he he was working against Ned all through season one even though like he pretended that he was working with him like even when they're like oh we don't like even when the Lannisters are like oh we don't really trust you here he like he just can like leave and and, uh, and get power elsewhere like he, he, he always has like he, he, was, he was a cool character because like he was such a great villain like he always was up to something up to something he was always thinking Ten steps ahead of everyone, mm-hmm. and it's like, was that really his one plan? Now was like, oh, I don't know if you can trust Arya. You guys should like fight or something. Like that was his one card, and then when they were like, <laughs> um, no, we're sisters. We're not gonna do that. He's like, oh shit. Well, uh, I don't have anything else now. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just kind of, I just kind of not well handled. I thought, like, what if the scene played out like almost the same way? But then, like, um, he's like, oh, I'm begging you, please don't kill me. And she's like, no, we don't have anything else. And then he's like, all right. And then, like, half the guards, like, start to, like, yeah. kill the other half of the guards there. Yeah. See, that would have been more, like, and then it turns into, like, it turns into, like, a fight scene. So he starts to run away. Mm-hmm. That's his first move. Yeah. And then Arya goes and after Arya him. Gets him yeah. Arya goes after him. And then Sans is like, oh, shit. And then Bran's like, oh, let me just, uh bring a wolf in here and then like a wolf crashes in through the window to protect Sansa. <laughs> yeah. So it turns into like this crazy fight scene like half because, because the Starks are like superheroes now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She's like, allow me to allow me to do my uh, X-Men thing. <laughs> like Sansa. Yeah, she just like turns into the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, no, but she's like, oh shit, like I don't want to die and then like a wolf, like Bran like sends yeah. a wolf in to like make her not die so like she like gets out but Arya's mission is to go after Lord Baelish, right? So then you have a moment where Lord Baelish, like, almost gets away on, like, a horse or something. Mm-hmm. And then, like, Arya, like, throws a knife at him or something. I don't know. Just, like, some cool moment mm-hmm. where Arya, like, stops him. And then she, yeah. like, she fucking says, like her, says, says something about... My name is Arya Stark. The last thing you see will be is, is a Stark smiling yeah. down. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. Some, whatever something like that. Whatever her... My name is Arya Stark. I'm crossing Yeah, or, like, or ba- basically kind of just, like, I like a moment where he's running away and then she, like, cripples him and then... um He's like collapsed to the ground. He's just crawling away, and then she's like, she's or like, and then she, or, and then maybe she like stops on his leg. And she's yeah. like, like oh, like, like you, you're basically, like, you're or basically, like he gets out of the the main yeah. keep, and then yeah. like on uh, this, and then like one of his guards is like, quickly, Baelish, come with me, and like take and like takes him on a horse. And oh stuff. yeah, and then and then he like takes off the mask and it's Arya, oh, yes. and like yeah. stabs him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just want a moment where like Arya like freaking like like. Like throws like let's say she throws a knife in like the back of his leg like yeah. like I'm thinking like right like inside the knee kind of thing yeah. like in that pocket <laughs> yeah. there so he's just like crawling on the ground he's like yeah, oh yeah. fuck like oh man and then Arya like walks over and just like stomps it into his leg <laughs> yeah. and he's just like oh fuck and yeah, she's like just... oh and then she like kneels down and gets onto his level and she's like look at you just crawling for life you've been doing this your whole life and I'm just gonna end it yeah 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 like you just you've been you've been you've been crawling you've been for for power or whatever your whole life kind of thing it's like. About time it ended, and then, like yeah. slits his throat or snaps his neck or I don't yeah. know, just does something cool, and then and then and then she goes back into the the one room and gives Sansa a high five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and like that's the other thing too is like the Starks like should be unstoppable now because they're all basically superheroes at this point. Yeah, like so the Ar- whole Arya can change faces. Yeah, the whole Hodor thing happens, and like and like that huge thing was built up just so that Bran could get away. So it's like, well, it's it's that Saving Private My- Brian moment where it's like, well, he better earn it then. What has he done this season? Because he comes back to Winterfell and he's like, I'm the Three-Eyed Raven now. It means that I'm boring. It means I'm common. And I don't really do anything. And I have, like, this infinite wisdom, but, like, no one utilizes it. It's like, okay, well, thanks, Bran. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for nothing. No, it's kind of. Cool. I, I like the I'm idea. Glad that they just Homer haven't died for you. They I guess. I guess if they had more, episodes, like, they would have expanded on that. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's well, they would have utilized it at least because like, the fact is that he. That's is, what I'm saying. Like that Hodor moment is like so powerful and so like it, it huge and like um, emotional and stuff that you like. It, it feels like Bran must be one of the most important characters now. 
Yeah. Because, like, oh, he's the three-red raven, and, like, oh, he's, like... Because he's, like, Yoda now. I yeah. mean, like, if, if, like, an Empire Strikes Back, um, like... The Empire gets to Dagobah. Empire shows up at Dagobah, kills Yoda, and Yoda's like, Luke, you're the new Yoda. And then... <laughs> Yoda and then, like, and then R2 sacrifices himself to, to get... A R2 suicide bombs. Suicide bombs, like, the Emperor, the or whatever... Or like, like like a bunch of the stormtroopers that Luke can get away, and then Luke drives away, and yeah. the, also Luke is paralyzed. <laughs> Luke's now Luke, paralyzed. Luke drives away on the the, the <laughs> in the is it the it's the X wing, yeah, and he gets away, and then he's like shit, yeah. I guess uh, and I'm then small, he, and, and then, then he, he grows, meets, and then he grows little green hairs. But then instead, he just meets up with the rebels, and he's like, hey guys, I'm boring now. I'm Yoda, I'm Yoda but like boring, and I'm not gonna do anything. So good luck saving Han by yourselves. And like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, and then he's like, "Oh, oh yeah. By the way, also Leia is my sister. But like, we should probably tell her at some point. But like, whatever, it's fine. I'll wait. I'll wait on that. <laughs> I'll just tell. Yeah, I'll just tell. So uh, I guess he finds out. I'll um, just tell Lando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he finds out that Jon Snow is Aegon Targaryen. <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. But it's like. Because at first you're just like, oh, okay, so he's he's uh, he's uh, Leon Stark's kid, so he's actually a Stark, like because it's like kind of vague as to what he is. So it's like, yeah, for- yeah, like okay, so there's a big, there was this huge fan theory. It was like a thing um, that was that was that that was like the exact thing that yeah that was that, like that actually oh we, John Snow might I don't, the theory was John Snow's not actually uh, the son of Ned. He's actually Son of uh, Lee, Leanna Stark, Leanna Stark, and Rhaegar Targaryen. Yes, and and that's um, why he's the most important. That's person. why he's the most important because he's Targaryen. a Stark and a and, and a Targaryen. Targaryen. Yeah, and those are the two main, uh, I guess, kind of like powerhouses of the series. Yeah, those have been like kind of the two major protagonists for the series. Yeah, the he's the Starks and the Targaryens. It's like no, he's a bit of both. Yeah. And and um and it's kind of funny how they do it because at the end of season six they're like there's that reveal that oh shit like John's not Ned's son he's actually Lyanna's son yeah and then at season seven they're like and also he's a Targaryen yeah like they they break it up <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's like and if you go back and watch that scene um from the season six yeah you can she whispers like something yeah but you can read her lips and she's saying his name is Aegon. Targaryen, which is kind of cool, but it's also like, why not just reveal it then? Like, why wait a whole season to yeah. reveal the why? Why reveal it at the moment that he's nailing his aunt? <laughs> I guess the I mean, like that idea is is interesting. Like that, I did like actually because it was kind of cool because it was like this moment of um, he, he he like it's like oh oh wait oh wait they're related. Oh wait, John! No, no, no! Don't do no, no, no John! No, don't John, do no, John! No! <laughs> I, any other time, I would say go for it, <laughs> but not yeah. now. <laughs> but not now. No, wait, no. Because <laughs> it's like it's like if Luke and Leia just like started banging, <laughs> and then and then and then and, and, and Han's like, oh yeah, they're they're siblings. And Han finds out. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, I don't. Like, do you think that's oh, no. that's what's interesting about that though? Is that um, but it's it's also like this idea of. Of the Targaryens always have like this incest thing going on, yeah, and it's like, oh shit! Like, so like, would she would she be like, ex- like would the, she be the cycles repeating? The now. cycles are yeah. So I guess it's kind of about like how she wants to like break the wheel and stuff. I feel like that relationship was a little underdeveloped. Where there's one point where um, yeah, where I don't know, someone says something to Daenerys like I think it's Tyrion. He's like, oh, that Jon Snow, he's a hunk, isn't he? And then she's like, what are you even talking about? And he's like, well, you know, he doesn't just look longingly at you because he wants a military alliance. I'm like, I can't really recall a time when she looks longingly at her. Yeah, cause and now because that line of dialogue has been said, I know that they're going to be a thing. So, like, yeah. why did you even do and that? And then, like, later on, um, what's his name? is like, hey, you know, like, Daenerys and Sean are probably going to pick up. And Sansa's like, what? He's like, yeah, well, because they're both young and single, so. It's probably gonna happen. It's probably gonna you happen. You know, all the young and single people who meet <laughs> up. 
We'll, 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 totally, <laughs> we'll totally fall for each other because that's how the world works. They're both so attractive. So. They're both attractive people, so they're just going to be attractive for, <laughs> for each other. <laughs> that's that's uh, what's going to happen. And like, yeah, and it's, I, I agree, I'll agree with you there. Where, like, you didn't really, like, you felt, because they just kind of met head right. Like, yeah, so like they, they, they start no, they start to, they start to develop it, and then suddenly yeah. they're nailing. and then they're like, well, it's it's a little like because there's a moment where like, he's like where she he she's like oh I believe you, and then he's like yeah I bent the knee, but like I'm dying, so like yeah. like I almost died there, so, so like I'm kind of like, and then she sees like his scars, but he's stuff. like yeah you're he's but it's cool because it's like yeah. yeah like all right I'll bend to you because like you're. You're something else. Like you're, yeah, you're special. You're, there's something special about you. Yeah, the way and that like, you were able to come save us on a dragon. Like most normal people can't do that. So yeah, all right. Up and, and, the, and then and then also and then there's like, the moment they don't, they also, don't, they don't she, share. She, yeah, she also sees like his scars there too. So it's like, wait, did you like die or something? Yeah, like, she doesn't ask a lot. Of, you have a lot of stab wounds. <laughs> I think there needs to be an extra moment though, because yeah. there was just there was just yeah, to be one more moment before they were sleeping together. Yeah, one more moment of. Like just like a conversation where, where, where she's like, like she's like, oh, did you like die? Like I've heard like like knife in the heart is like just an expression. She's like, no, no, look, I straight up saw a fucking scar yeah. where you got stabbed. It's right next to your heart. <laughs> yeah. And then and then she like takes off his shirt and she's like, oh shit. And he's like, yeah, I got like yeah, stabbed and I shit. Died. I kind of died. Like <laughs> and then I got brought back and she's like, what was death like? He's like, it sucked. It was terrifying. Like <laughs> I really don't want to die. And then. Yeah. And then she's like, yeah, I don't want to fucking die either. She's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I don't want to fucking die alone either. And then they like start making out. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, have that one extra conversation right before. And then like that, yeah, they, that's all they needed. Cause I, I really like their meeting scene where, where she's all, I'm Daenerys. This is Daenerys Stormwork Targaryen. First of her name. And, uh, yeah. And I was in the mother of dragons, breaker of chains, all that, all that good stuff. Do you like, and then it's like this is John Snow. Snow. Uh, he's, oh, he's, right. king in the north. he's king of the north. Yeah. Uh, but and then like once they start talking, she's like, you know, you should just bow to me because I'm great. And he's like, you know what? Well, fuck you. I've, I've been through some shit. You don't know me. <laughs> you don't know. I, I, me. I've been. I, I, I. My life sucks. Also, like, <laughs> yeah. I just deal with. I died. I mean. <laughs> I've been through some shit. You, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> no. See, that moment could have been yeah. better, but it wasn't as good because Davos is just like. Because Davos kind of talks for him. He's like, yeah, Jon Snow first. seems some shit. Then Jon doesn't... I wish Jon Snow said that stuff himself, though. Doesn't he? No, not really. He said oh. he took a... Davos is like, he took a knife in the heart. And then Jon Snow just kind of looks right. at him like, dude, what the hell are yeah, you doing? And then it's like, he, he's, he's been already, through a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're already trying to convince him that there's ice zombies coming. I don't really want to have to get into... Also, I died and came back <laughs> from the dead, yeah. <laughs> He's also like, so it's like, oh, so then maybe it's like, maybe that moment, like, when she, like, this is this is my fake moment when she's, like, looking at his scars and shit. She's like, oh, so you beat death. It's like, that means that we can totally beat death. Be, yeah. That means we can do it, right? And then he's like, yeah, sure. Sounds good. Let's let's nail. <laughs> like, that's, that's what, that's, you know, that'd be a better moment. You know, hey, nurse, I got a present for you. It's, it's my, my dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's my dick in a box. Yeah. I call him ghosts. <laughs> I call him my long claw. <laughs> oh gosh, it'd be so terrible. You just write like a bad fan fiction. <laughs> oh, believe me, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, of Game of Thrones porn oh. parodies out there. Oh. I wanted to see if I could make the dragon roar. <laughs> What's that even mean? <laughs> I don't know, Danny. I don't fucking know. It's bad. They're just, they're just bad. Like the the, the, the metaphors like don't even make sense. <laughs> um, and she's they're like, just, "Let's see if I can tame this wolf." <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> they both vomit on the floor. <laughs> they both vomit of of pure bad <laughs> of bad writing. Poor writing. <laughs> just. It's just the actors, they just can't keep it in, and then they just they just keep the tape where they throw up <laughs> because of how bad the porn writing is. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, I guess, like, yeah, if they built the the, the John So Daenerys relationship a little more, like one or two more scenes, then it wouldn't have kind of felt like, well, yeah, because they're hot, so, like, of course they bang. But it's like, but I thought these characters were supposed to, like, have more to them than that. <laughs> 
Yeah, because like you talk, you start to like you don't really think about it while the show is kind of going on, but like there's a lot of similarities between them where they're both very like ranks to riches. Yeah, it's, like and that's what I like about. Them. It's like they're like finally meet. It's they're like, they're actually, like they're basically like like um. Uh, she gets sold to slavery and he yeah. joins the Night's Watch. Like, does he do that willingly or is he, like, kind of sold into They're kind of like, eh, go join the Night's Watch. Because we don't really... We don't really like you, so... We really want you to run. Yeah, so he's like, fine, I'll just join the Night's Watch then. Screw it. So, like, there's... So there's that moment where he... Like, he, he joins the Night's Watch and then he... He... Loves and loses and she loves and loses and... Like they could have, that could have been a cool scene. Part of my scene where they're part of my scene where he's shirtless. Um, <laughs> she's like, he's like, oh, I loved a woman once. She got killed by a child. <laughs> she was murdered by a child in cold blood. <laughs> but she's like, I like this one guy, Aquaman. He was pretty cool. <laughs> he died also, and that's like, yeah. oh, that sucks. Yeah, you know, that happened, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like we genuinely yeah. right, like, like when they actually like because like that his his be, his so. joining the wildlings is like his version of um her going to the um the the Dothraki yeah yeah like, it's like a whole other culture that he becomes a part of and then of course he's like so they're both like super sympathetic towards those different sides and stuff and then they become both of those sides become major parts of their armies yeah so yeah. there's like there's just these a lot of parallels and you don't really <laughs> notice it until. They finally are in a room yeah. talking to each other. Yeah, something. and like they have the, the, the like, sort of, I guess those are different moments, but like sort of like the born again, like the, the died and rose again kind of moments where like Daenerys is like, I'm gonna kill this witch and burn myself and, and it's gonna be great. And then, and then, and then she, she lives through that. And then like he's like, he gets stabbed stuff. in the heart and lives through that. Yeah. And I guess the whole song of fire and ice thing is like, oh, she's fire and he's ice and like, I oh, get it. I get it now. Would that would that be worse or better if that if the title instead of the last episode was called instead of the wolf, the dragon, dragon was the called the the fire and the ice? <laughs> well, if it was just called the song of fire and ice. Well, they're saving. It. Don't worry, they're saving that for the season finale. Yeah, because I guess that's kind of the idea, though, is that it's like this, everything's been building to the, yeah. to the fact that Jon Snow is the single most important person in this universe. Yeah. Because he's, he's got the fire and the ice. Yeah, so, like, that's interesting, too, because, like, there's this prophecy of, like, the Chosen One, and they thought, Red Lady thought it was Stannis. Turns out it wasn't. It wasn't really that important. The, the, some of the other Red, like, priests, and, like, some of the, uh, those other chicks are, like, it's probably Daenerys, because, like, if you translate it properly, it says the prince or princess who was promised. So, like, it could be Daenerys, because that would make sense. She had, like, dragons and shit, so. Yeah. But, and then it's, like, when Jon came back from the dead, and, like, he's, like, the most important character, and also he's a Targaryen now, too, so, like, yeah. it's probably more important than Daenerys in that regard, too. Yeah. So is it just, like, yeah, it's just me, Jon Snow, the best. I, I, I'm great. I'm better than it. I'm the chosen one. Yeah. And the prophecy had nothing to do with Daenerys. It's just coincidence. No, oh, this is cool. dragons and shit. Or, or, like, what do you think that's going to turn out I don't know. To? I mean, there's kind of a, there's a cool thing where they kind of, they like kind of hint at it a little bit earlier. It's just like, that doesn't really make sense. But who cares? Where, um, uh, there's a part where, um, John like touches a dragon with his hand and stuff. Right. Yeah. And it's like hey. that's kind of cool. it's like oh well, I mean like the Daenerys couldn't even do that like it was just time with her dragon it just kind of took time and then she just kind of got good at it. Right. She wasn't good at dragoning right away like it took her a long time to like actually control them. Mm -hmm. So like you know I don't really believe that that he could do that just because he's a Targaryen. <laughs> also they don't they have no way of knowing he's a Targaryen. It's really? just because he's the it's got the blood? Like, is that it? Like, is they just, yeah. like, Targaryen blood? Is that just the thing? Probably. Okay. I guess. But, like, I feel like... What were you asking? Well, why, is, why is Daenerys fireproof? Because cause she's... I don't fucking know. Because <laughs> she's Targaryen, probably. Is Jon Snow fireproof? I don't think so. He can get stabbed and stuff. He's stab-proof. <laughs> he's knife-proof. He's knife-proof. <laughs> he's, knife <-proof. laughs> he's been stabbed a lot, and he's fine. So... <laughs> <laughs> so you might be fireproof. That's like the fireproof knife. Proof I don't know. They don't, combo. They don't like throw it in, in a in a furnace or anything. Yeah. Or, or anything. There's not a scene. No, he's 
Is he cold proof? <laughs> is he? No. What is he? No, he has to wear like. What is he? A sweater. <laughs> he, a, he doesn't wear. He doesn't wear a Stark sweater. Oh, I'm going beyond the wall. I gotta wear a sweater. <laughs> With with a hood, gotta put on a. Gotta keep my ears warm. Gotta put on the stark sweater that my <laughs> my my father made me. My father made it for me. <laughs> Sean Bean is like knitting this <laughs> stark sweater. <laughs> it's got like a wolf on it. Remember to wear. A sc- <laughs> it sounds like an old lady. <laughs> he says, "Remember to wear a, a no, no, scarf." No, the scarf, the scarf, the sweater just says, "Remember the scarf." Remember the scarf. <laughs> Or something like that, like the winter is coming. <laughs> Remember, uh, get get your earmuffs. <laughs> oh my gosh! Where yeah. wins? <laughs> no. So do you think after John Snow learns that he's in love with his aunt, he's gonna like be like, I guess it's fine. <laughs> or, like, do you think? Uh, gonna- yeah, that's a good question. Are they gonna be like, oh, maybe we should break up because incest is bad? Or is it gonna be like, well, I'm 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 pregnant now, so too late, too late. I feel like that's what's gonna be. Yeah. I think it's because I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be. Um, uh, it's like, oh shit, uh, maybe we shouldn't be together then. And then she's like, well, I'm pregnant, and he's gonna be like, oh, all well, right, I don't, I, want, I don't, I don't want, like, want another bastard I want, kid. Yeah. I, as a bastard, I've grown up a bastard my entire life. Yeah, I don't want. To I don't want to give that fate to someone else. So let's get married. I guess so we'll get married then. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, but they'll like kind of play it off as like, oh, it's love or whatever. Yeah. So then they're like, so like they do, and awesome. they do kind of like. Strategic. It could be like a strategic thing. Then it's like where they like you can tell they definitely do kind of like each other, but know that yeah. they can't really you know do things because it's kind of weird because they're related right. and stuff. Um, but. I think that would be an interesting thing where um, uh, where you have the series basically wrap up where everything is, like, super... You get the super happy ending, and yeah. then um, Daenerys, like, gives birth to, like, this kid, right? It could be a male or a female, because it doesn't matter. And then they take a look at the kid. They're like, oh, it's got your whatever. Then it's like, oh, look, it's got my knife scar. And <laughs> stuff like that, right? Where it's, it's got, like, they just kind of point out how it's, it's got... It's not even a, a human. <laughs> it's a dragon. It's part dragon, part wolf. <laughs> No, but basically, they just, they're just like, oh, look at this kid, like, um, it's like, I know this is like a kid of incest and stuff, so like, it's like, oh, it's like, is it, it's like, we have no idea if he's going to be like right in the head or anything, right? It's right. like, we could have, it's like, we could have a job, this could be a Joffrey, and then, and then she's like, or it could be like a Tommen, you know, like Tommen and Marcelo were, were pretty good, and then, and then he's like, well, yeah, but then they died, so. yeah no, no, but it's like. But it's just the point is that it's like it's like oh it could go either they're like oh we don't really know right and they're like well let's just hope for the best and that's how the series ends. Yeah, but I feel like I feel like that's kind of cheap. Like that's kind of nothing. Like okay, so the whole like claim that like Daenerys has is like hey you know I'm in charge because the people that follow me actually like me. Mm-hmm. and stuff like that and they're like and everyone else is like huh that's a different way of thinking that I haven't thought of before yeah what if like the, the people actually like chose the lead the people that were in charge of them yeah so you think so they're like, gonna try I, to leave it in democracy I think I think it has to yeah because her whole thing is like, I'm gonna break the wheel and like all this like stuff and it's like yeah but if she just takes over because she has dragons then it's not that's not enough. Like, what if that's she? Not, what if she? Okay. What if she like takes over and then she's like, "All right, I want you guys to like elect a leader." And yeah. Then, and they're like, "Well, we took you because you saved us from the." White and she's water. like, and then she's like, "Cool. So right. in a few years, we're gonna have something called a referendum where we were elect another leader. Is that yeah. fine?" Like, okay, sure. Yeah. Like, we'll, so. we'll probably just pick you again because you're pretty good. <laughs> you know, maybe we'll pick <laughs> John, we'll John or something. Or something. <laughs> you know, those are the ones people. But, like, because if you, it, it, just from like a historical perspective, every time like. A, a dictatorship is overthrown, and they put in a democracy afterwards. Yeah, and then it's it's sort of like a cycle, and like and that's how like Hitler gained power was like he, it started as a democracy, and then like yeah, he so you can have the it, and then it I think what works for what works for the entire and series again, and like, work, yeah. So if you do something like that, where like I think what works for the entire series is you have um, um you have something like that where it's like um. 
you have to, it's like, oh, we're like, it's like, oh, it's democracy. It's like democracy again, right? Mm-hmm. But then, because the show isn't really like a happy show, you can leave on like a super dark note where you have like, um, like a few like Lannister people go to like meet in some secret basement somewhere. They're like, oh, I know what you're playing. This is going to take like a long time to pull this off because we're going to meet a lot of people if we want to take back the throne and stuff. And it's like, yeah, but like, you know, we'll, we'll just wait. But when we do, we're going to put back in fucking dictatorship. It's going to be great. Then you just end the series there. Like yes. Just, and it just shows that it's like, oh, it's a right. cycle. It's a cycle. That cycle. sucks. That really sucks. I guess, but I, think, I guess you saved the main story, but like, I guess houses are always just going to quarrel. Like, and you just, just right. like, you just leave it on like that kind of dark. Note yeah. No, like, I there's think like, there's where where you, you hint at a rebellion where it's like, there's probably going to be a rebellion after this. Yeah. I think that could be a thing. Where, and you like, don't, you don't release any stories after that. That's yeah. I don't think, I think it's done. Like it should be. That's how you end. That's how you end it. Because um, because I, I think that the show is dark enough that they should end on a dark note. Like yeah, that. they could do that. Because the show like, is called Game of Thrones, right? As opposed to the, the oh, books. The right. books is more like let's Sorry, talk about the wall. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, the, and that's the other thing too is it's 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 shifted so much from like medieval politics to. Okay, there's ice zombies. Kill everyone. <laughs> and we gotta fight them with dragons. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous now. Yeah, but it works. But it still kind of works. And there's been so much build up to that that it's like it's cool when it, uh, that's finally paying off. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Like I'm actually kind of like I'm not sure where it's gonna go too much. Like in terms of like who's gonna be on the throne at the end because like that's the question that we've had yeah. for the whole series. I guess we're gonna have to watch the entire last season together. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. That'll be fun. Like, uh, and like, is it, it can't just be, like, it, it's, I don't think it's going to be just, so Daenerys and, uh, John get together, they kill Cersei, and they kill all the White Walkers, and now they're in charge. The end. That's like, too simple. It's too It's easy. never been it's that too simple. simple. and it's too easy. Even though, like, it's not just at this point like most a lot of, like I feel like we're going to lose a lot of characters in the last season like they're going to pretty much kill off everyone mm-hmm. except for like a few they could probably kill off I don't know if they'll kill off John. yeah I don't think they'll kill John they could kill they could, they could kill Daenerys though I guess so it's more likely for them to kill Daenerys I think at this John, point, yeah, John's like John the chosen is, one is like, oh, he already died so like, yeah they're not going to kill him again and he's, and he's like be, he's like, just oh, kind of in a perpetual, perpetual state of being sad yeah so I think that that would just help that. You Have know? you seen the Game of Thrones uh, on Australia? For seasons three, four through six? Yeah. No, I haven't seen okay, that. We'll watch it after this. Okay. I think that's the one where they point out how he has kind of the same expression for everything. You know, oh, okay. Which is funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, is there anything else you want to mention? I don't know. It's a good show. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Yeah. We've gone a long way. <laughs>